Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Monday, March 27th, 2017. And in this video we're going to try and clear up some confusion in the Flat Earth community about calculating the curvature of the Earth and what we should expect to see when we take long distance images, such as through the Nikon P900 camera that I'm using. In the comments under my videos there are often rather confused comments from the flat earthers about what we should expect to see. So they're confusing the calculation for the drop or how much the earth curves away with the amount that is hidden from our view. So we're going to try and clear that up. So as we can see here it says that using the Pythagorean theorem that calculates to an average curvature of 7.98 inches per mile or approximately 8 inches per mile squared. Now this is the calculation for calculating what we call the drop. So let's take a look at that first. So we're starting off with a circle on a grid to represent the globe Earth. Now I'm going to draw a line to represent a person standing on the top of that globe Earth. And we also need to draw a tangent line representing the ground that we're standing on. Now the drop calculation is actually calculated from this point here. Standing at our feet at ground level outwards, any point along there down to the curvature of the earth is our drop amount. And this is measured at 8 inches per mile squared. So for example in my video where I filmed Mount Monganui from Makatu Beach and Mount Monganui was 18 miles away, we would multiply 8 inches times 18 miles times 18. Now that gives us the figure of 2592 which we need to divide by 12 inches to get the feet and that gives us 216 feet. That is the drop over 18 miles. But that is not the hidden amount, so we also need to look at that. Now let's draw another line to represent an object such as a mountain. And I'm going to draw it from the center of the earth to make sure that my line is perpendicular with the surface of the earth. Now I'm going to draw another line from the top of our observer, his eyes or camera, out to the point where we can see the lowest part of the object that's not hidden by the curvature of the earth. So we're just skimming across the surface or the horizon of the earth to the point where we can see the object. So this point here is our horizon and this point here is the bottom of what we can see. Anything below this point is actually hidden by the curvature of the earth. I'm going to zoom this in so that it's easier to see. Now I'm going to draw another line from our eye or camera height to the bottom of our object. And this area here, between the circumference of the Earth and the red line, is the bulge height as seen from our eye or camera. This amount here is actually the hidden height of our object. And you can see that the hidden height is considerably shorter than the drop height. If I extend this from our point here, you can see that the drop height is considerably longer than the hidden height. And this is where a lot of the flat earthers are getting confused between the drop amount and the hidden amount. Now we saw before with my calculations for the drop that 8 inches times 18 miles times 18 equals 2,592 inches. We divide that by 12 we get 216 feet. And if we go to the Metabunk curve calculator here we see that this agrees with the figure given of 216 feet. But note that that is different to the figure for hidden, which is 126 feet. Now this figure here assumes that there is no atmospheric refraction, that the light is traveling in a straight line without bending. 
If we also allow for standard refraction, we see that the refracted hidden figure becomes 102.9 feet, almost 103 feet. So that's a difference of about 23 feet from this figure here at 126 feet. You'll note that the refracted hidden is actually less than the amount if we don't allow for refraction. This means that we're actually seeing over the curvature because the light is bent as it passes through the atmosphere and comes up over the horizon. So be careful not to confuse between the drop amount and the hidden amount. And if you want to do this properly, you also have to allow for refraction. I'll put a link in the description area to this curve calculator by Metabank, and you can use that and check the figures that I've used in my video. Thank you for visiting my channel. Please be sure to subscribe. For further discussion, please check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. If you'd like to support my work, you'll find a PayPal link on the About tab of my channel. Your support will be most appreciated. Thank you for watching.